the limping lady, deadliest spy of World War II, Virginia Hall. Interested to see what we got with the deadliest spy. See why she's got the name limping lady. Before we do, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. I am also posting extra content and early access content on my Patreon page. Link is in the description. Yeah, let's get straight into this. I don't have a daughter, but if I did, this is who I would want her to look up to. All right, big statement right there. Today, we're talking about Virginia Hall, aka the limping lady, probably the most effective American spy of World War II. Okay. And she managed to do that with one leg. One Virginia leg. Virginia Hall, born in 1906 in Baltimore. She grew up in a really wealthy family and was a complete tomboy the entire time. And her father absolutely loved it. He taught her how to hunt and he okay. completely endorsed her being not very ladylike all of the time. Fair in addition enough. to being a tomboy, she was also highly intelligent, graduating from high school with ease and getting accepted into the top female colleges in the country. Her mother oh, on wow. the other hand had different plans because immediately after high school, she expected Virginia to get married to a young man from another wealthy family in the area so they could combine their family businesses. Oh, they've got two different pathways, bro, path ideas. So she gets engaged to this guy at 18 years old. Fast forward one year, she's 19 years old and she keeps catching her fiance cheating on her. So she calls off the engagement and runs off to college despite her mother's wishes yeah hell she no. attends the top two female colleges in the country radcliffe okay. and barnard which are the equivalent of harvard and columbia she studies economics and foreign languages deciding that she wants to become an american diplomat she wants to live in an embassy and represent the united states of america okay, however cool. this is the 1920s and the odds of a female landing that job are slim to none but she wants to maximize her chances so she learns as many foreign languages as possible she becomes fluent in german italian and french and finishes college abroad studying in germany france and austria oh wow While finishing college in europe in the late 1920s she would bear witness to the birth of fascism and the rise of the nazi party and have a better understanding of how dangerous that ideology was than 99 percent of americans okay she would return home in 1929 a few months after that the stock market would crash the great depression would start and her father a wealthy business owner would lose almost everything and the increased stress would lead to him having a heart attack and dying this made Virginia Yo. determined to accomplish her goal of becoming an American diplomat. So she got a job working for the U.S. Embassy. I like that. that she's using that for motivation. Do a dad proud. I like that. See in Poland as a secretary. She worked there for several Wait, years and there? got a job working for the U.S. Embassy in Poland as a secretary. Yeah. She worked there for several years and every year she would apply for a promotion to become a U.S. diplomat. And every year something went wrong. The first year they lost her application. The second year her application made it through because she delivered it herself and she she was a shoo-in. She could speak four languages. She was a college graduate. She was highly intelligent, well-spoken. So she passed the application portion of the hiring process and had to have an in-person interview. And conveniently, they accidentally told her the wrong place and the wrong time to be. So... Yo, what is going on, bro? It, it was really that hard during this time. I love the fact how, like, they lost her passport, so she went and delivered it herself, bro. Oh, she got disqualified again. Realizing that that embassy had it out for her and was not about to let a woman become a diplomat, yeah. she transferred to a different embassy in Turkey. So now it's 1933. She's living in Turkey. She's working as a receptionist at the embassy still, and she's just waiting for that next opportunity to apply to become a diplomat. One of her hobbies at this point in time is to go out hunting with a shotgun that her father had bought for her when she was a kid. To right. To her hobby for a woman but virginia's an irregular type of woman so she goes out hunting with her friends one day and they're hunting for snipes which if you don't know is this little tiny bird apparently they're really hard to hit and this Aww. is where the term sniper comes from regardless oh wait what no yo i love when i learn something like this bro tiny bird apparently they're really hard to hit and this is where the term so the term sniper came from like how hard snipes are to hit Yo, that's sick. Where sniper comes from. Regardless, at one point she has to hop over a fence. She forgot to turn the safety on on her shotgun and accidentally blew her own foot off. Luckily, her friends were there and they managed to pick her up, get her to the hospital in time to save her. Wait, how did she do that exactly? Accidentally blew her own. She has to hop over a fence. She forgot to turn the safety on on her shotgun and accidentally blew her own foot off. Hop over a fence. Oh wait, so she was hopping over and the gun just went off a. No. She forgot to turn the safety on on her shotgun and accidentally blew her own foot. Yo. Luckily, her friends were there and they managed to pick her up, get her to the hospital in time to save her life. While she's in the hospital recovering, she would end up getting gangrene, which is a very, very serious type of infection, okay. especially back then in the 1930s because antibiotics weren't going to be widely used or available for another decade. And I mean, the doctors back then are basically just grunts with scalpels. So they come over to Virginia. They're like, <laughs> hey, here's the deal. You're going to die. There's one chance that we can save you. Uh, basically, my medical opinion is your leg is pissed off and it's trying to kill you. 
you, my strategy is I'm going to kill it first. I'm going to cut it off and throw it away. So that's what they do. She gets Yo, this is like some walking dead thing, bro. Like, oh, you've been bitten your leg. Boom, get it off amputated from the knee down. Later in her life, she would admit that while she was recovering in the hospital, her father had come to her in a dream and told her that she had to get through this because she had important work to do. So oh, no she way. Does. She makes a full recovery, gets a wooden prosthetic, learns how to walk again, and goes right back to trying to be an American diplomat. However, you gotta remember, she's a complete tomboy, and what's the first thing a dude does when he gets a new car, a new set of wheels, a new gun? He always gives it a name, right? Right, Virginia named her wooden leg Cuthbert. So she goes back to work and continues trying okay. to become a diplomat. However, now they have a legitimate reason to not let her become one. They don't need to lose her application. They don't need to give her the wrong dates and the wrong times Just anymore. Just got like apparently there was a pre-established rule that amputees were not allowed to become diplomats. Wow. Why? I have no idea. But it turns out that Virginia has now both literally and figuratively shot herself in the foot. <laughs> Virginia, being the badass that she is, though, oh, is about to take no for an answer, so she begins lobbying to have the rules changed altogether. She doesn't have much success. Fast forward, 1940, Germany invades France, and Virginia is like, fuck it, I'm gonna go be an ambulance driver and help out the French because I hate Nazis. And okay. that's exactly what she does. Virginia, a 35-year-old woman that was physically unfit to be an American diplomat where she would have to sit in an office and talk to people, is now on her way to France to be an ambulance driver in an active war zone. So she yeah, make it make sense bro and why they make like I know, I know that like during this time it was hard as a woman to get jobs like that right but like she literally was an like they're making out like she was an expert bro like why are they making it so hard she's so determined just yeah like bro she's an ambulance driver all throughout the battle of paris and she is one of if not the first americans to actually stand up and fight against the nazis after wow. france falls she has to flee so she hops on a train and makes her way over to spain while she's at the train station she meets a british intel officer and she tells him her story this guy is so impressed that he's like hey take this phone number call my friend he can probably help find you a job over in england if that's where you want to go Okay. So she calls a number looking for a job, and that number puts her in contact with a man by the name of Nicholas Boddington, one of the head guys of the newly formed British SOE. SOE standing for Special Operations Executive, which is just the new spinoff of Great Britain's Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, a.k.a. their equivalent of the CIA. So she talks to them and they pretty much immediately want her to be a spy. She speaks German, she speaks French, she's lived in France, she understands the culture, and most importantly of all, she's an American. And this is important because that means she can use her actual American identity and all her real documentation to give to the Germans to get into France, posing as a journalist. Virginia immediately agrees and goes into training okay. for the next six months, learning everything there is to know about espionage, or at least as much as she can in that amount of time. Fast forward six months later, mid-1941, Virginia Virginia Hall, the spy, gets dropped off in Vichy, France. Which, if you don't know, at this point in time, France is split in two. There's occupied France and- Wait, 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 wait. So, the UK are using her as a spy, and she's using her American details because Germany aren't going to think that America's going to send a spy in. They're going to know that Britain is, but wow. Wow, really cool. Actually, really cool. And then there's unoccupied France, also referred to as Vichy France. Okay. Now, Vichy France is technically supposedly free, but pretty much everybody knows that it's a puppet state for the Nazis at this point. And Hall's job is to go in there, posing as a journalist for the New York Post, build a spy network, and do anything she can to fuck with the Nazis. Okay, and just so we're on the same page, this isn't like the movies where she has like instructions to go meet with some guy that's her connection and she like integrates with this already existing spy network. No, right. she was the first spy to go in. She had to go in and build the network from scratch. They Yo. took Hall, a 35 year old woman with a wooden leg, gave her some money and some cyanide pills in case she got caught, sent her into enemy held territory and was like, Fucking figure it out. So Hall <laughs> shows up in Lyon, France, and she doesn't even have anywhere to stay. All the hotel rooms are full. All the houses are rented. So many people have been displaced from the war. There's nowhere for her to stay. So when she right. first gets to France, she ends up living with a bunch of nuns at first. And she, like, had a curfew the whole nine yards. Then after a couple weeks, she finally gets a hotel room, and that's where she sets up her headquarters and makes her first contact. She goes straight to the U.S. Embassy and tries to get their help. And the head of the U.S. Embassy is like, absolutely not. America's neutral. We want nothing to do with it. Okay. But the second in command of the American Embassy pulls her aside and he's like, yes, 
I'm willing to help. And this is really important because this is the only way she's going to be able to communicate with London. You see, because it's an embassy, they have a diplomatic bag. So it's going to be mail that's not being screened by the Nazis before it goes out. So right. if this guy's willing to slip her messages to London into the diplomatic bag, it's going to be the only way that she's going to be able to get communication outside of France. So she gets it done. She establishes a connection. She now has a way to communicate with the outside world. On to the next order of business. Okay, cool. Go see the gynecologist. <laughs> Not for her, for the Nazis. You see, she has a two-pronged attack method that she's going to use to wreak havoc on the German ranks. Step A, recruit a gynecologist. Step B, huh? recruit a brothel owner. All right, so here's the plan. She gets this gynecologist to start working with her by the name of Jean Rosette, and then she gets this brothel owner by the name of Germaine Guerin to start working with her. And the plan she works out is the brothel owner is going to send all of his employees to this particular <laughs> gynecologist and he's going to sort out the ones that do not have STDs and the ones that do have STDs right. and he's not going to treat them but he's going to give them a clean bill of health and then the brothel owner is only going to let those ones sleep with the Nazis. So already Hall is establishing herself as a diabolical mastermind. I mean she's Yo! conducting biological warfare. Weapons of ass destruction if you will. <laughs> All the other spies are out here worried about intercepting mail. Wait how is the plan? Get yeah <laughs> bro you're killing him off by giving him disease yo fair enough man fair enough when sending secret messages and she's over here destroying the german ranks from the inside out and making them enjoy it while she does it and the scary <laughs> part is, is she's just getting warmed up you see now she starts sending messages back to london through that diplomatic bag okay. asking for supply drops in the countryside and she gets them they're dropping off guns explosives and she's turning around giving that to these guerrilla fighters that are just doing anything they can to fight the germans and she's also getting money to bribe officials and heroin yeah, the second prong of her prostitute attack on the German ranks is that after the employees have already given the Germans an STD, right. they're then also going to attempt to get them addicted to heroin. <laughs> I mean, the Germans get all this credit for developing their brilliant blitzkrieg tactic during World War II, which translates to lightning war. I'm going to go ahead with whatever authority I have, and I'm going to dub this the brothel Krieg tactic in honor of Virginia <laughs> Hall, because this is brilliant. So this, this is actually such a good plan, because they're not going to expect this at all like literally at all. this keeps going for months and months and she develops more and more connections and builds this enormous spy network that is officially given the code name heckler and every month okay. more and more spies are coming in and she's helping them get set up and these new spies know how to send wireless transmissions so now there's other ways of getting messages outside of france but the problem is these wireless transmissions can get tracked by the nazis and a lot of these new spies are getting caught that way right so fast forward october 1941 all the other spies there's like 12 other ones in the area right now and they decide they're going to have a big meeting. Basically, they're coming up with an excuse to get together and have a party and actually talk about all the cool stuff they've been doing, which is a huge mistake for a spy. So Virginia avoids it. Sure enough, all Smart. spies get busted and captured. And this was known as the Marseille mouse trap, where the German Gestapo captured 12 spies all at once. Wow. They captured all the wireless operators. And again, Virginia is basically the only spy on the ground. And she is the only spy still capable of getting a message out to london so she sends a message out to london basically saying that everybody else has been captured nobody else is going to be able to communicate except for her in addition to that the german gestapo also now know what she looks like and have drawings of her and they know that she walks with a limp and they're starting to call her the limping lady so oh she's wanted she hey listen i ain't surprised though I ain't surprised. She is effectively number one on the Gestapo's most wanted list and leading the Gestapo in Lyon at this point in time is Klaus Barbie, one of the most brutal Nazis of World War II. And he is quoted as saying, I would do anything to find that limping Canadian bitch, end quote. <laughs> he believed that she had to be Canadian because he didn't think any American could speak French so fluently. Buongiorno. London okay. responds by saying, hey, That actually makes sense because ca uh, Canadians can speak French. So fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Hey, that's terrible. And so fluently. Buongiorno. London Buongiorno. then responds by saying, Hey, that's terrible. A, hey, but also go ahead and flee. Get out of the country. They're going to find you. They know what you look like. They know that you walk with a limp. And every time you take a step with your hollow wooden leg, there is a distinct <laughs> wood noise. They're going to catch you. <laughs> Obviously, I'm paraphrasing, but to this, Virginia basically said, Hold my leg and watch this shit. Rather than <laughs> flee, she decides that she's going to orchestrate a jailbreak of the other 12 spies that have been captured. How? But she's playing it on hardcore mode because the Germans know that they're looking for the limping lady. And every time she takes a step with her hollow wood, 
wooden <laughs> leg, it makes a wood noise. And then her plot armor activates and divine intervention kicks in because supplies into France are so low and so scarce that they're no longer getting rubber and leather to make shoes out of anymore. And people have to start carving their shoes out of wood. And all of a sudden, everybody's walking around making wood noises, <laughs> completely disguising her movements. Yo, that is so lucky, bro. That is so lucky! So rather than fleeing the country, she tracks down the prison that the 12 spies are being held at, then finds somebody that works at the prison, convinces them to get her a roster of the prisoners, uses that to track down a different, completely unrelated prisoner's wife on the outside, what? befriend her, and convince her to help her. Virginia, what? not wanting to be seen herself because they know what she looks like, decides that she's going to have this other prisoner's wife start smuggling in supplies to the 12 spies and by extent, this woman's husband. Like they're baking handcuff keys and screwdrivers into cakes and shit to smuggle these supplies in. And this goes so well that she decides she's really gonna start showing off. She's gonna try to smuggle in an entire wireless set into the prisoners. And the wireless set is like the size of a briefcase. How? So she gets a 70 year old priest that's a double amputee from World War One to smuggle this briefcase in by sitting on it in his wheelchair. And he ends up giving it to the other spies that actually know how to use the equipment. Here's the thing, the spies on the inside needed a really big antenna to make this thing work so they ran a wire from their cell into this like wireless setup outside across the yard and attached it to the boundary fence using the entire fence as an antenna and yo this is mad this is actually like something you would see on a movie that isn't real life bro like it like a tv show this is mad and attached it to the boundary fence using the entire fence as an antenna and somehow never got caught. So now the spies what? are transmitting messages from inside the prison directly to London. So fast forward like a month, Virginia has smuggled these guys everything they need to be able to break out from the inside. And once they get outside the boundary fence, she is gonna be there to pick them up, get them to a safe house and smuggle them out of the country. Everything is completely arranged. Then on the day of the jailbreak, Virginia makes sure that somebody else tries to smuggle in a bunch of booze to the prison prisoners knowing that they would get caught and that the guards would end up drinking all the alcohol that night making it easier for the spies to slip away right. which is exactly what happens that night all the guards are drinking partying having a good time and while that's going on the spies are utilizing the handcuff keys and all the tools virginia smuggled in to escape they run across the yard under the cover of night scale the perimeter fence and waiting there is virginia who immediately takes Crazy. them to a safe house they hide for two weeks straight while the entire gestapo is searching everywhere for them and then she smuggles them out of the country okay fast forward a month it's november 1942 yeah i gonna lie the limping lady Bro, she is so smart, man. So she just staged that huge jailbreak. All the Germans are looking for her. And now is there a movie on this? I, I, honestly, I say this every time he tells me a story. Because it was, it, it seems like it would be such a good movie, bro. Now, the Gestapo has brought in an additional 500 men, all with the sole purpose of finding the limping lady. It is at this moment, Virginia decides... It's probably time to leave. But with 500 <laughs> new Gestapo all looking for a woman with a limp, she can't take any of the normal ways out of the country. So right. the only method she has to escape is to take the Pyrenees Freedom Trail, a 50 mile hike through the Pyrenees Mountains to cross the border between France and Spain. And she has to do it in November in the coldest winter for France in over 200 years. It and with a wooden leg. I was so good to do that with both legs. It is a three to four day hiking trail for people doing it for fun, not in the middle of winter, and Virginia manages to do it in two days with a wooden leg. During the hike, she was communicating Mad. with London via radio, not like secret spy radio, just normal radio transmissions. It wasn't going to blow her cover. She was already blown and she was leaving anyways, so it didn't really matter. And she would tell London that Cuthbert was giving her issues because I'm sure, as you can imagine, hiking with a wooden leg would get pretty tiresome after a while. Oh, yeah. Appear, so, wouldn't it? To which London, not knowing who Cuthbert was, responded by <laughs> saying, if Cuthbert <laughs> is giving you problems, have him eliminated. Hmm? <laughs> Take him out. So she crosses the border into Spain after two days, complete badass. She has escaped the Nazis, and 48 <laughs> hours after she leaves Lyon, her entire hotel room gets ransacked because the Germans finally figured out who she was, and she had escaped just in the nick of time. Oh, and wow. then she promptly gets arrested by Spanish authorities for illegal immigration. So then she has to get a message out to London, out to America. They finally come, bail her out. She goes back to London working with the SOE and she's like, okay, well, cool, send me back in. And they're like, uh, no, your cover's blown. You've done all you're gonna do. 
uh, that's, that's it for you. We're not going to let you do anything else as far as like actively working undercover goes. Again, I'm paraphrasing, but Virginia Hall basically says, okay, well, peace out nerds. I'm going to go work with the Americans. She goes over to America, <laughs> goes to the OSS, the direct predecessor of the CIA and is like, Hey, I'm more experienced than any spy you guys have. Oh yeah. Put me in coach to which the OSS is like, sure. Why not? And they give her a shot this time. Virginia makes sure that she takes a wireless transmitting class though. So now yo, she really had to prove herself. This is a story about never backing down and proving yourself because now like, remember at the start, she was getting rejected for an office job. Now she's doing one of the hardest jobs. She can also send the wireless transmitting signals. She doesn't want to be the only spy not able to like last right. time. So she does that. She then realizes that she's going to have to pretend to be a much older woman. This would help disguise her limp and it would help change her face so that they didn't know what she looked like. Smart. Anymore. So she goes to a professional Hollywood makeup artist, learns how to do makeup to look like a really old woman. Okay. And then she goes to a dentist in London that grinds all her teeth down. So she looks like she has terrible teeth like a French peasant would. The OSS okay. then sneaks her back into France on a PT boat. Yo, this is some serious dedication right here. And drops her off completely by herself again. And from there, she just starts doing it all over again. She develops a huge spy network again. This time she's posing as an elderly milkmaid by day and a spy master by night. Wow. At this point in time, the French resistance had all kinds of guerrilla fighters, but they were basically just running around blowing shit up, being as big of a nuisance as they possibly could and weren't being strategic about it at all. So over the course of the next year and a half, Virginia set out to establish a chain of command and actually get them to work together and coordinate attacks and efforts. What? By 1944, she had amassed an entire army. She had three battalions, 1500 guerrilla fighters that she was coordinating attacks against the Germans with from the inside, all while transmitting signals to the Americans to have them drop off supplies like guns and explosives to continue fighting with. She what? was then notified that in June of 1944, D-Day was gonna happen. And in the weeks leading up to it, she used her guerrilla army to coordinate and sabotage major highways, railroads, communication lines, and bridges, preventing the Germans from reinforcing the right beaches in a timely fashion. Wow. Potentially changing the entire course of D-Day. And somewhere around this time frame, the OSS would send in a reinforcement to help Virginia out, a young Polish operative by the name of Paul Giot. He parachuted into theater too late to have any real influence on the operation, but him and Virginia would end up falling in love. Aww. After the war, they would both move back home to America where Paul would get his citizenship. Yo, two spy, was he another spy? I know he was an oper uh, operative helping her out, but was he, I'm let's just say he's a spy, but imagine two spies being together, bro. Would you be able to trust each other? That's like Mr. and Mrs. Smith right there. Would end up falling in love. After the war, they would both move back home to America where Paul would get his citizenship and they would both begin their careers working for the newly found CIA. They would then go on to lead a specialized task force monitoring communism in the Eastern Bloc of Europe. Yeah, this incredible story literally ends with two spies falling in love. He was a spy. <laughs> and going out on missions together. In 1945, wow. President Truman wanted to give Virginia the Distinguished Service Cross, the highest honor a civilian could receive because technically spies weren't in the military, so they're ineligible for the Medal of Honor. Oh, but okay. President Truman wanted to give this to her. She definitely, if she was a part of the military, she definitely would get the Medal of Honor. 100% bro this is insane her story a humongous insane. ceremony tell her story and make her basically a international hero and celebrity virginia wow. however declined that offer because she didn't want her cover blown she still wanted to be operational wait what was that eligible for the medal of honor but president truman wanted to give this to her in a humongous ceremony tell her story oh, okay and make her basically a international hero and celebrity okay i I, I, I was tripping out. I thought it was because he said celebrity. I thought it was going to make a movie. I was going to say, wait, you should have like done that. I could have watched it. Virginia, however, declined that offer because she didn't want her cover blown. She right. still wanted to be operational and capable of helping the United States and the world if she was needed. She became the only female civilian of World War II to be awarded the Distinguished Service Cross and was awarded to her by General William Donovan. And by her own request, it was awarded in front of only one witness. Wow. Her mom. Her future husband and fiance, Paul, wasn't there because she didn't think her mother would approve. This woman <laughs> was behind enemy lines fighting against the Nazis for all of World War II. The Yo, this woman, Virginia Hall, the limping lady, is amazing.
amazing entire thing longer than probably any other american and she's still scared of the opinions of mom <laughs> and that's it virginia and paul would live happily ever after they retired at 60 Love years that. old and virginia would pass away at the age of 76 in 1982 and nobody knew anything about this until they read her obituary she never gave an interview she never wrote a memoir she never said a single thing and later in life when she wow. was asked why she never talked about it she said and i quote too many of my friends died for talking too much wow. which i think we can all agree is gangster as fuck so in conclusion this is a story of virginia hall the deadliest spy of world war ii thank you for watching best way to support the channel yo is the there the has to be a movie about Quite this bang, out. there has to be that was so good so 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 good the fact that people know and care more about kim kardashian over virginia hall is gonna <laughs> piss me off probably for the rest of Yo, he's got a point. He's got a point. But no, really, really good video. Enjoyed that a lot. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. Yeah, Virginia Hall, what a woman. Honestly, limping lady. That was such a cool ass story. Really hope it's a movie or something because that was insane. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure you do leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I am posting extra content and early access content on my Patreon. If you guys do want to check it out, you could also direct message me over there. I've been having a lot of conversations with you lot. It's been fun. My Patreon link is in the description. I'm also live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash l3wg if you guys want to check me out over there i'll see you on the next one peace